Hi everyone, it's Coffee Stitcher. Attempt two. Um, this this is getting ridiculous. Um, I've had a hell of a time getting these videos uploaded. Um, since the new method with YouTube, I'm trying YouTube Capture again. I'm hoping that this time it actually uploads the full thing. Last time I did a video and it only uploaded the first four minutes and just completely cut it out. Um, so we'll see if this is better. Um, I had a hell of a time getting my video that I filmed Monday uploaded. So, we're trying it again. Um, how is everyone? That's good to hear. Um, Alright, so, I have a finish. Cannot show it to you. Because it's in the mail to Leslie, who's helping me get it matted. So I did finish the Clouds Factory Rocky Horror. I have now since purchased two more Clouds Factory projects, probably to be started during Mania. Um, so, unfortunately, though, I can't show it to you, because it's literally in transit to Ohio. So, yeah. Um, but I do have whip updates, a start that I hadn't intended, um, some haul, my verbal essay on Dorothy, and my Oz stuff. So I do have at least some, and I've got my questions to answer. Um, so first off, thank you to all the people who sent in questions. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Um, keep sending questions in. I like questions. Um, so the first one comes from GMOS, which was how to find Stitch Mania, um, which I did answer for her, but, um, I'll answer it here as well. Uh, Stitch Mania, the biggest misconception, Mania actually has a Y in it. It's M-A-Y-N-I-A, -A, and it's two words. Um, the reason being, when we first started it, it was the first 15 days of May, we were doing this new start thing. So, Mania. And that's where it was born. Um, my phone, if you ever message me and I respond and I don't put the Y in there, it's because my phone is auto-correcting it and I'm too lazy to fix it. Um, because sometimes laziness rules. So that's how you find us. Um, the Stash Queen and I are the two admins, um, and I owe her a lot because I am not as active of an admin as I would like to be, um, for the pure and simple reason of I, I haven't had the time. Um, between the new job where I actually work normal hours, um, and dating someone who also works normal hours, um, that causes some some things to fall by the wayside. Um, at least we're, for now, we're anticipating moving in together towards the end of the summer, at which point I should have more time again. Um, but right now I'm also focusing on spending as much time with my parental units, um, while I'm still living under the roof. Um, so there you go. Um, so, huge shout out to Katie. Um, I told her this earlier this week too, but I really do appreciate all the hard work she does because I don't know what I would do if I didn't have her. Um, so I know sometimes I come off, may come off a little god on high when I step in and say something, and it's not that I mean to, it's just that I unfortunately have to be the admin that can only step in when there's something big. Um, but don't think that I don't love each and every one of the people in Mania, because I do. Um, all right, she also asked another question. How do you calculate your stitching hours and set up your rotation? Um, my rotation is currently, I get all of my stitch longs done for the month, at the start of the month. I just go ahead and get those done. Then whatever time's left, I work a couple, three days to a week on each one, and then I rotate. Um, I basically go by what's calling to me, what I'm feeling. Um, hour-wise, I usually get a couple hours every night um, after dinner and before bedtime to stitch, and then Sunday afternoons. I don't usually get anything done on Friday or Saturday, um, because that's what I'm at, boyfriends. Um, so that's kind of how I set that up. Um, also, thank you to everybody, um, who wished me well with the allergies and such. I'm almost past it. Um, now it's just sort of sinus pressure from the weird weather, so I'm having to take Sudafed still because if I don't, my mouth aches. Um, because I don't get sinus pressure here, I get it here. Um, and I think it's because of a whole lot of issues. But um, 
let's see. The next question comes from Julicious and is not Stitch related. It's about the ever lovely, always wonderful Carol Channing. Um, when slash how did you discover her and was it love at first sight or did she grow on you? It's not a very easy answer. Um, the first time I saw her was probably in a rerun of the Drew Carey show that she was in. Um, went weirdly with Donald Trump. Um, and I thought she was funny, but I had no idea who she was. And I was kind of early high school at this point. And then as I started progressing through my theater days, I sort of like, I knew the name. I had seen her show up from time to time on things. So I kind of knew who she was. And then it was probably my freshman year of college. It, well, it had to have been my freshman year of college um, when YouTube was kind of just starting up. Someone posted a clip of her and the cast of Seesaw, which that's its own story, doing That's How Young I Feel from MAME on the Dean Martin show. And it was ridiculous. And I was obsessed. And then a friend of mine said, well, have you ever seen the Irwin Allen Alice in Wonderland? Which the majority of you out there know that it, when Irwin Allen was involved, there were random ass celebrities all over the thing. That Alice in Wonderland was no exception. And Carol played the White Queen, and she had this fabulous song called Jam Tomorrow, Jam Yesterday, But Never Ever Jam Today. And then she turned into a pig. No, no, a sheep. Sheep. Pig? Sheep. 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 Um, and the, um, that was really where the love began. And I started sort of impersonating her, jokingly. And then I got to see her live about 10 years, 10 years ago, this last Halloween. Um, and she was fabulous. So I've got kind of a mini Carol Channing shrine. I've got that. And then I've got those two pictures there, which are both covers of life magazine. So it was sort of a developed love. It wasn't like I looked at her and went, Oh my God, who is this woman? I don't get it. Oh my God, I get it. It was, it was sort of an, as I started to learn more, the more and more I really started to like and love her. So that's the Carol Channing answer. Um, Helen Taylor asked me, when you open your Etsy shop, will you be sending to the UK? I will be doing PDF files. So, yes, I will. Because they'll be downloadable. Um, Dragons and Whimsy asked me, how do you design your own patterns? Do you use software, graph paper, or something else? Generally, I use software. Um, if I'm redesigning something that already exists, then I put that design into the software, and then I re-go from there. Um, and I use Max Stitch. With what I did in my designs, um, was I designed all the characters, and then I figured out what I wanted to do layout-wise. So, that was kind of how I did it. Um, and one of the things I did was I, with these especially, was I did a lot more research to a degree, because I wanted certain things to look a certain way, and I was trying really hard to avoid the Disney look. Um, so that was kind of how I did that. And then, um, to also answer a question, I was not allowed Polly Pockets because Polly Pocket was super, super, super girly, and Dad wasn't okay, was not gonna let me do that, which was fine. You know, I mean, really and truly, I didn't need the Polly Pockets. They were cool, but the boy version, Mighty Max, was even cooler because it had monsters. And monsters trump them all. I'm sorry. All right, EF Bauer asked me, how do you store all of your floss? I'm especially interested in how you're able to file, file all of your hand-dried and specialty threads away so that you can retrieve them when needed. Well, they're... There's a couple of different things. I use a bobbin box, a floss box and bobbins, for all of my DMC, all of my Weeks Dye Works, all of my Silk Mill, anything that comes off the skein like Weeks Dye Works, or like DMC, goes on a bobbin. I also bobbin my Karen collection and my Gloriana, but I'm pretty loose with my bobbinating so they don't crimp. If it's pre-cut, then... If it's pre-cut or if it's something that you have to cut to be able to really strand, then I put it in a baggie, I label the color, 
and I put it in, and then if I've used it, anything, the used parts go back here. Um, and then currently I have little note cards that divide the grouping up. So like in this case, gassed letter P. So that's what I do. Um, ones like the ever lovely Liz Westlake. Well, first off, I also have this big thing as stuff to sort still. This thing is overflowing. Ones like Liz's, she, because I asked her, because I had some trouble you know, you get the, and this does happen from time to time with everybody, including DMC, where I was trying to undo it and it just kept getting tangled. And she said what she would recommend doing instead is you, and I guess I'm just going to go ahead and put this one in, is you take and you cut, see it's twizzled together. So you take where it's, you untwizzle it and you cut where it's tied so you can pull it off. And then you have your nice little ring. And then you take where the strands sort of separate. And you cut again. And then you've got perfectly cut lengths. This is embers, by the way. This was from my skein end collection. And then you've got that. And then I throw it in a baggie. Like so. Really didn't actually intend on doing a full-fledged tutorial, but there you go. Then note card. And then you label the note card. God, this pen is a mess. Okay, well, you can read it. That works. I mean, I don't worry too much about neatness in this because, quite honestly, nobody but me is going through this stuff. And then I just slot it in. I've got a drawer here that I could pull out, but I'm not going to. I need to put it in alphabetical order. So that's what I do. Um, some things... I've also got a cigar box of random, like, one-off things where it's, like, the only thing I have from that group because I didn't want to try and sort that. Um, and I forget about it sometimes. So, there you go. Um, Grand So B, who is the picture above Ellie Mae. I'm guessing you're thinking that was Ellie Mae. That's actually Carol Channing and Hello Dolly from the end of the show. And above it is Carol Channing and the Vamp. Um, or, if you meant over here, that's... Not Ellie Mae, that's Betty Buckley. That's Carol Channing again, and that's Agnes Moorhead. There you go. Um, and I feel like this may be the last... That may have been the last question. Yeah, that was the last question I got. So, there we go. So if you have more questions, throw them my way. I like the questions. Um, for one thing, it keeps me going a little bit longer in my videos. All right, so haul. I got my Dragonfly Lotus um, Thread of the Month. This month was brown, and there are some really gorgeous browns in this. Um, there's Colombian Roast, which is showing a little redder on here than it actually is. Um, pecan Pie which has some gorgeous yellow and a little bit of purple running through it. Um, then both of those are Petite Mulberry. Then in the Lotus Collection, and these I believe are Merino Wool, Columbia Roast. And then finally, Bristlethorn, which looks like tweed. It looks like pants or owls. I really want an owl stitch, I think, to do that on. I don't really even like owls, but it just screams owl or squirrel or something foresty. Um, so they're gorgeous, wonderful as always. Again, not going to say that ordering from Liz and subscribing to her various different things will make you a millionaire, but I'm not saying it won't make you a millionaire. All right, and then I got my... I got two fabrics from Lourdes of Die Stitch Love. One was expected, um, since I couldn't use Silent Night... Um, she very graciously sent me a, um, piece of Sandy Shores, 
which is a gorgeous neutral. Um, and I have a couple of ideas of things I could do on it. See, it's a beautiful brown. It really does look like sand. Um, 